Well, I, I, I'm really grateful to be here. I think the world of uh, a lot of the work that everybody's doing, I've seen uh, you guys out there. I live in the city of St. Louis, and uh, and I've been uh, involved in lots of different stuff for a while. But uh, I filed a um, exploratory committee a few weeks ago to run for Congress. And uh, within sort of a day or so of running for Congress, my congressman, who I expect to oppose, Congressman Carnahan, has proceeded to give public witness to why he needs to be replaced. I mean, it's been quite a spectacular showing from, uh, from his, um, you know, I guess misstatements is the way to be politically correct about the health care bill. Yeah, it's going to save money. It's going to save money. It's going to be make money. revenue neutral. That's right. It's going to make money. It's going to make profits. So, so it, and then the other night, of course, uh, as someone's quick to point out, there was not, there was never been, I've been involved with the, the tea parties. I, I tell people that um, the week of the first tea party, I emailed Bill Hennessy and I said, hey, Bill, if you need any help, I'd be happy to help. I'm glad you're trying to do this. And he emailed me back and said, well, what do you think I should do? And I said, I've never heard of holding a, a political thing at lunch on a Friday in February down by the water. So don't expect a lot of people. Of course, if you were there, some of you probably were. There's about 1,000 people, or 1,500, I think. Somebody count 1,500 people. And from then on, I said to, to anyone that would ask, these tea parties are capturing a, an energy that is different than a lot of what we've seen before. Certainly a new concerns, but also I think people are finding that they can tap into uh, a, a sense of giving voice to their concerns. And one of the most objectionable things about Thursday night, Congressman Carnahan's town hall, was he didn't stay to listen to anyone's comments. And he didn't let anyone make a comment that wasn't on the preferred list that went in the side door, you know, whether it was the union guys or the other ones. So it was all, so as someone said, you know, the tele-town halls they referred to, I mean, this is how bad it got. A friend of mine, or someone who, who I talked to, uh, sent me an email. She said, I called Thursday at noon because I heard there was a town hall, so I called Congressman Carnahan's office, and I said, are you having a town hall that I could go to? And they said, no, 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 no town halls. There'll be a town hall on the phone late in August. It's a tele-town hall, but you can only be on the call if you're a voter, and you'll only be able to speak file questions before it. So, <laughs> We can see where that's going to go. You know, it'll be Congressman Carnahan and then his wife will ask him questions, his chief of staff will ask him questions, and it won't be anything meaningful. So that's the most object. To me, that's the most objectionable thing. That there are people that want to say something, and the guy who is elected to hear something isn't isn't willing to listen. And to people say, oh, well, now it's now the mob and the violence and all. There was never any violence. I've been to all the tea parties. I've been to all these uh, many meetings. We've been all of them, but never been any violence until the, you know, Obama's crew sent out the union guys and all. So we need to be clear on that. And <clears throat> the sad part is, by creating violence, they're helping marginalize the tea parties. It's intentional. None of it is is unintentional. It's meant to make the tea parties seem violent and scary for people. I mean, I had someone email me and said, can I come to the next one and bring my kids? Because what's it going to be like? You see, that's meant to, if you've been to any of the other tea parties, kids come, families come, it's, you know, and now there's this, this and that's intentional. It's the, it's the, it's the devious side of, of what is going on. It's really uh, done on purpose. But I, I wanted to tell you that I, I'm not, I'm going around the district and, it, and don't think that it's not meant to contrast with our current congressman, and I started this three weeks ago. Am I spelling it right? Yeah. And that's the name of the gatherings I do. I've been, I was in St. Genevieve yesterday, been in Jefferson County, I've been in South St. Louis County, St. Louis City, even gone to, to uh, what would be considered sort of by voter res registration, enemy territory, which is Clayton, you know, there's a lot more liberals and Democrats registered there, but, and, and ask it anything, because if I'm gonna run for Congress, and I'm going to be in Congress. I need to know what people are interested in, and what they what they uh, care about, and what they think of me, and what they're. So this is what I'm doing here today. And so I'll talk for a few minutes about me and who I am, and, and I, I, then I ask you to fire away and ask me anything. Let's talk about things, and, and ultimately, 
if I run for Congress and I really put the team together and the piece together to do it, which is to say I've asked my wife if I can and uh, she's, she signed off on it and my kids think it's kind of exciting and, and I'm trying to get my, uh, my uh, business life together to do it. But I'm headed that way, but I'm out here talking and, and if I do it, it will be to lift the voices of every person in the district, whether I automatically agree or not. The point is that they deserve to have their voices raised. And I think my career, I'll talk a little bit about it, has been about giving voice to uh, to those people who are not being heard and who and the principles that need to be heard. And some of them are, are ones that we all uh, would agree on. But I want to write a couple numbers down that I think will be, yes ma'am, oh, can you see that on the camera? Thanks. Uh, see, that's why she's here. She's, she's not only leading us, but she's the mom for it. Can you put that one? All right? Uh, the, uh, I want to write a couple numbers down for you. And uh, the first one is 10, the second one is 1, and the third one is, is 21. On September 30th of last year, the uh, national debt hit $10 trillion. It took us 200 and something years to get to $10 trillion. In six months from that date, move forward six months to March of this year, we added another trillion, so 10% more in, in one six-month period to 200 and something years. In 10 years, if we do what uh, has been presented, we will acquire a $21 trillion national debt. And while we're all worrying about health care, rightly so, while we're all worrying about cap and trade, rightly so, while we're all worrying about uh, the, the, the changes to our, our work environment in the in the car check bill, while we're worrying about what's going on, the big picture stuff, what I would say to you is that right there is the single greatest threat to our future as a, as a nation and to our families and our kids and our grandkids and our kids have that. But not, it's not really our kids and our grandkids, it's really all of us here. And, and if this trend goes, Social Security, for the debate about what you should do with anything, Social Security will be bust. There'll be no way to fix it. We will have IOUs out that you won't be able to handle. Medicare, it won't be a debate because we won't have a nickel to pay for it. And what this is, is a path to the destruction of our nation as we know it. And so I, I like to keep those numbers in mind, that, that we, we lose them. I think all of us, I think many of us, I hope all of us, are seeing that the stimulus, the so-called stimulus, was a, really a spending boondoggle. Uh, it was not, I, I like to ask my neighbors down the block who are, are Obama supporters and labor folks, you know, how's that stimulus working out? And they're getting madder and madder because they see it wasn't a stimulus about jobs. It was a stimulus about Nancy Pelosi's, quite literally. I mean, in this case, Barack Obama advocated to Nancy Pelosi and the crew. He let them write the bill. It's, it's Nancy Pelosi's pet, pet issues. So, you know, the, the, our friends, yeah, that's right. The, the San Francisco house mouse or whatever it is that uh, Nancy Pelosi funded research on. But if we don't, um, we need to, to, to realize that, uh, that the stimulus, you know, we're, we're starting, I'm sorry, but my friends are down the block and they said, I, I say, how does stimulus work out? And they said, not very good. And then one of them was a Chrysler worker and I said, you know, how's that bailout of Chrysler working out? And we bailed them out, $18 billion. And somebody forgot to say, hey, by the way, if we actually pay you that much, could you keep the plants open in the country we live in, you know, out of Fenton, they literally had to box up the, 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 the uh, plant production pieces right. and send them to Mexico to keep making the same thing in Mexico. So uh, the, the they don't is, buy. The, right, the, the world is upside down. And But the point is that while we're worrying about all these things, I, I think we need to keep uh, an eye on, uh, on what is uh, one of the biggest problems because it's happening, you know, cash for clunkers. No matter what you think about the thing, here's what kills me. I figured that the uh, auto, uh, the auto uh, dealers must love it. So I happened to call Dave Sinclair, and I said to Dave, young Dave, not old Dave, young Dave, who runs the operation, I said, Dave, you must love this. He said, it's a nightmare. He said, it doesn't, it's not working well. He said, you know, on the phone, he said, I said, really? He said, well, I don't have time to tell you about it because I'm working.